Hey, Ross. Hey, Richard. Hey. What are you guys working on? Talking about indoor air quality today. Cool. You know, buildings need to breathe. And when I first got in this business, they breathed plenty. You know, they breathed at a rate of 10 to 12 air changes per hour. That, that, meant that needs like a full stop to make right. people understand that. Right. Like all of the air in the house yeah. leaves right. 10, 12 times yeah. an hour? Divide that into 60 minutes. Every five minutes, you have the whole house completely emptied out and replaced because everything leaks so much. That's a lot of breathing. Right. So nowadays, what are we seeing? I mean, nationally, the average is seven air changes and code in Massachusetts for new construction is three. And uh, that's because of spray foam and air barriers. You know, we're getting away from the traditional building materials we used to, we used to use. So how bad is the indoor air quality as a result? Inside this house, it's the ultimate sort of petri dish, this hamper, really, where stuff is trapped. And people don't realize that the air inside most houses is two to five times worse than any air you're going to find on a busy city street because it's trapped. That's depressing. Absolutely. Indoor air is dirtier Absolutely. than outdoor air. And these pollutants are coming from everywhere. The cleaning products under our sink, paints, carpets, furniture, I mean, cooking. People, people right, me, you. I talk you. a lot. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> the gas range, the oven, right. right? Those are all giving off chemicals. So these gadgets that I'm looking at here, are they going to tell me what I've got in the air and how bad it is? So these are a variety of different monitors that have different sensors. Mm -hmm. So this one does CO2, right, where we're breathing out. It does temperature. It does relative humidity. Mm -hmm. This one, for example, is doing VOCs, particulate matter. Mm -hmm. Those are the particulates that are really, really small. You can't see that you can actually inhale, get into your lungs and into your bloodstream. So we don't have a device that tells us everything that's in the air and breaks right. it down. You need a device to go looking for a particular thing? You're picking specific things. You've got to decide what you want to monitor and find okay. the right device for it. So once this thing tells me I have too much CO2 or what was it, VOCs? VOCs or particular matter. What do I do with it? Well, you got to ventilate. You know, a building needs to breathe, but it doesn't need to breathe through every door and window. It needs to have a set of lungs. And if I was talking about a set of lungs, it would be a box something like this, either called an HRV or an ERV. So how it works is that you've got this core in the middle and now stale air that would leave the building from bathrooms or contaminated air would pass this way with a fan across this core and to outside. But at the very same time, another fan brings exhaust outside air in across this core in the opposing direction. So imagine this here in the winter. It's rich with temperature and it goes wants to leave to outside. It would have just gone outside. Now the cold air picks up the heat that's in the exiting air and it keeps the energy inside the building. So you keep the energy inside the building, but exhaust the fresh air, yeah. exhaust the stale air out of the building. We've seen those before. I get it. I put one of these things on my wall, which I have not seen before. What does it do? Does it beep and say turn on or alarm or? So yeah, some of them will just give you a visual indicator, of like a light, right, that changes colors. Some of them will actually talk to your phone. So it'll actually send you a notification or it'll actually give you a graph that shows mm -hmm. you when you, yeah. actually, when you actually have bad air, uh, air quality. And so here's a main screen for one of them. I can see three different pollutants, particulate matter, VOCs, and carbon dioxide. I can also see temperature and relative humidity in the space. And here, I'm actually seeing them over time. So here's an event where our particulate matter actually spiked to 251. Caused by? And that was caused by the uh, gas range being on without the exhaust fan running. Oh, yeah. okay. At the most basic level, you could crack a window or run an exhaust fan when you see this, but where it's going is that these devices now are talking to these devices or other yeah. exhaust fans. Right. Like a smart thermostat. That's right. Absolutely. Now we got smart So it does it automatically air. behind the scenes. So what do you guys think? New normal? Are we going to be seeing a lot of these? I think you have to. Everybody's going to watch it. The buildings are only getting tighter. And the last thing I'll say about this is I built a new house, what, 15 years ago, super tight with all the foam insulation, tight windows, and I didn't have one of these for the first year. And what happened is we always felt sluggish and mold formed everywhere. And then we put it in and it just changed. It's an intangible that you can't really mm. transfer until you live with it. Just to have fresh air in the building. It just changes the way you Absolutely. live in the space. Cool. All right, guys. Well, good information. Thank you. Thank you. So which one measures methane? <laughs> that one does. <laughs> Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project. So be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.